<clears throat> All right, <clears throat> this is section uh, 6.2, Applications of Normal Distribution. And uh, thanks to Naomi, uh, we're recording tonight. <clears throat> Area is probability. This is a fundamental notion we developed in 6.1. They are literally the same. We cannot calculate probability directly. We can measure area directly. Sometimes the tools are fancy, but we can do that. And our calculator is actually quite good at this. So they literally are the same. <clears throat> and that brings us to the two fundamental problems that we look at in 6.1 and in 6.2. <clears throat> the first is uh, calculating or finding a probability. This will be the measurement of some sort of area the TI-84 tool that we like to use here is the normal CDF tool. And you'll see me do a number of examples using that tool. <clears throat> the other uh, basic uh, problem we address is the problem of finding a score. In fact, sometimes more than one score. <clears throat> we also use a TI-84 tool called inverse norm. And the two are actually right together on the calculator and you will see me uh, run through uh, both of these. Now, <clears throat> these tools truly are important. I use them all semester long in one form or another uh, once, I, once I introduce them. <clears throat> there is a commonality though that I think students really need to take into account as they work through these types of problems. And I really took a, I really tried to stress that uh, <clears throat> in uh, the previous couple of lectures. So <clears throat> we draw a picture of the distribution. <clears throat> now, this is not a graph in the sense of y equals mx plus b or something of that nature. It could be, but that's really not what we're after here. The picture is designed to help us figure out and to compose the problem correctly. And once we do that, <clears throat> we can then begin the process of finding those probabilities or the scores. <clears throat> Doing this will help us determine which of those tools we want to use. That's what this picture is really all about. Again, I cannot stress this enough, this drawing of a picture uh, as being a fundamental <clears throat> quality that we want to address here. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I'll also remind people about a little bit about our vocabulary. Uh, we have this notion of what we call a critical value. <clears throat> critical value, <clears throat> it's a score. <clears throat> that defines significant outcomes. <clears throat> I'll even draw a little picture to uh, address that. And by the way, the notion of a critical value works for distributions other than <clears throat> a normal distribution, but a critical value would be a significant score or a value here <clears throat> such that these scores out here are significant. <clears throat> there might be one over here too. Again, those scores might be significant. Out here, they might be significantly high. Down here, perhaps they might be significantly low. <clears throat> the point is, these critical values work to define a region of a distribution. <clears throat> and that area that I've shaded corresponds to probabilities. <clears throat> so, that's basically where we are in terms of a bit of quick review. You're going to hear me <clears throat> use all these terms, draw the pictures, use the tools as I run through some examples. <clears throat> so 
I'm going to start with the notion of IQ. It follows a normal distribution and the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. <clears throat> and I'm going to run through two problems to illustrate the kind of things that we do with this notion of finding a probability. So I'm going to begin with probabilities. And I'm going to take a look at a couple of questions. <clears throat> Question number one, we make a random selection, maybe me, <clears throat> maybe you. We ask, what is the probability A person has an IQ between, oh, let's see, uh, between 90 and 120. <clears throat> so that's the kind of question we might ask. What is the probability the person has an IQ between 90 and, 20, and 120? And there's a couple of very important pieces of information, three of them. I must know that I've got a normal distribution for any of this to work. <clears throat> so that information needs to be conveyed along with the mean and the standard deviation of that distribution. Once we have that, then I can take a look at <clears throat> the scores themselves and figure out exactly what kind of question we have. We're looking for the probability that a person has an IQ between 90 and 120. <clears throat> so I usually like to convert that to some sort of inequality because that's what my graph or picture will take. So once I've got all of this figured out, <clears throat> I'm ready to go ahead and address the problem. So as I say, drawing the distribution is quite important. There it is. The mean is 100. I want to find the probability that someone has an IQ between 90 and 120. And I'll remind people, this is IQ we're measuring on that scale. The vertical axis, by the way, is probability. Now, <clears throat> we're looking for the probability that a randomly selected individual has an IQ between 120. <clears throat> that corresponds <clears throat> to this area here. So the way to calculate this probability is to actually calculate this area. <clears throat> so this is the area that we want. Whatever this area is, we need to calculate this area. <clears throat> the problem is it's not a rectangle, a triangle, or a circle, which means most people are well, I think the technical term is SOL. <clears throat> so what do we do? We resort to calculus. Now, <clears throat> the nice thing is we don't really actually engage in the study of calculus. We have our calculator do this problem for us. A fundamental aspect of calculus is to calculate area on funky ass area of shapes like this for reasons like probability. So the tool, normal CDF. <clears throat> so let me jump over to my calculator. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and uh, figure this out. All right, so distributions, normal CDF. I, I never used the uh, first one up there. The lower bound for my picture is 90. 
The upper bound from my picture is 120. The mean is 100. The standard deviation is 15. <clears throat> then I can go ahead and paste that into my function. <clears throat> so there is the area. If you have an older version of your TI-84, I'll turn my stat wizard off. <clears throat> you may not have a stat wizard. <clears throat> so this time when I go ahead and I select normal CDF, <clears throat> I go right to the function itself and I have to type in 90 and then where's my comma right up above the seven key. <clears throat> That's the low end. That's the high end. There's the mean. There's the standard deviation. Close it up. <clears throat> Hit enter. And there you have the area. The area and the probability are the same. So first non-zero decimal uh, digit, one, two, three. The fourth is a two. So this six stays a six. 0 0.656. <clears throat> Let me uh, stop the sharing and come back over to my calculator. <clears throat> 0 0.656. It's really important <clears throat> that you remember that this probability here and this area are the same thing, identical. <clears throat> so normal CDF, you always, uh, the data always goes into that function in the same way. They call that the uh, syntax. And there we go, there's our first example. Now, I wanna illustrate some of the issue that one might have with this type of uh, tool. Well, with our tool in particular. <clears throat> so still working with IQ, Random selection again. And this time we're finding the probability uh, IQ is greater than 105. <clears throat> now, here the problem. Um, Again, we draw the distribution. There's the 100. 105 is a little bit bigger than 100. There's the X, which again is, I'll even remind everyone, it's IQ. So I am looking for this area here. <clears throat> now, this is the first issue that we'll need to face. And there's a couple of them that look about like this. <clears throat> What do I not see in this picture? I do not see an upper bound. It just says greater than 105. Greater than 105. That means X is more than 105. Now, <clears throat> that means that that statement means X could go as high as positive infinity. Yeah, sure, no one's actually going to have an IQ of positive infinity, but that's an issue. So let me explain how we're going to deal with this. And then I'm gonna come back to my picture. But again, remember I'm after I'm after area. <clears throat> and you'll remember because this is a probability distribution, the total area under that graph is equal to one. So the fact that there's an affinity there doesn't matter in the slightest in terms of the total amount of area. Weird, but that's the way calculus works. Now, that's the problem I have to deal with. So let me share my screen again. Back to my calculator, clear them away. <clears throat> I'm gonna go and turn my uh, stat wizard back on. Yeah, so, 
Here's my distribution. There's my normal CDF. <clears throat> I said the stat wizard was turned on. Hold on. It's easier for me to. Uh, illustrate it uh, here, so let me see. Okay. That should do it. So the lower limit here from my picture was 105. <clears throat> For the upper limit, I have to actually pick a number. So the number that I always pick for whatever reason is 10. And then I use my caret key and raise it to the ninth power, 10 to the ninth. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. There's a 10 to the X key down here. I can do it that way too. but I don't care for that. I always just go 10 carat nine, 10 raised to the ninth, it's a billion. There's the IQ, their uh, mean, excuse me, and the standard deviation goes into my function. <clears throat> and there we go, 0 0.36944 and change, 369, 0.369. So <clears throat> again, um, we have this issue where the picture helps me <clears throat> set up the problem. The probability that X is greater than 105 equal to 0 0.369. <clears throat> so that's really the way the first tool works. <clears throat> Here's another way that we often use uh, this particular type of tool. For example, what percentage of people have an IQ below? Hmm, 80. What percentage of people have an IQ below 80? Now, <clears throat> the total area underneath that graph is equal to 1.00 or 100% if I choose to represent it as a percent. So <clears throat> I can find that particular area and convert that to a percent. So I find the probability that X is less than 80. <clears throat> and then once I've done that, I will go ahead and convert that probability to the percent that the problem requires. Again, I've got that fact that the graph approaches the x-axis like an asymptote. And if you're not sure what that word means, don't worry. It will not ruin your semester. <clears throat> so let me jump back over. And run through. Hmm. Another example. Distribution. Normal CDF. The lower limit. This time I need a negative number. That's negative infinity all the way over there. If you try to use a subtraction, you will get an error message. So negative 10 carat 9. 
Order of operations means that the exponent is evaluated before the negative sign. That's really a negative one times 10 exponents before multiplication. <clears throat> the upper limit is 80. The mean is still 100, the standard deviation 15, and we'll go ahead and paste that in. And I get a 0 0.0912. First non-digit, non-zero digit. So I'll take three, and then the fourth one is a one, so the two stays a two. 0 0.0912. <clears throat> so 0 0.0912, that's the probability in the area, but I wanted this as a percentage. So I will move that decimal two places to the right and I get a 9.12%. <clears throat> so about 9%, less than 10%, if you will, uh, of people have an IQ below 80. So sometimes they'll ask uh, questions about a percentage. The notion of a probability can be stretched, if you will, uh, to accommodate that question. <clears throat> All right, so that's really the very first example where we take a look at finding a score, excuse me, a probability. Now let's take a look at finding a score. All right. And again, we need a normal distribution. We need the mean and we need the standard deviation. Oh. And a nice, pretty picture. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go right back to the IQ because the numbers are nice and round. They work well in the uh, calculator as far as giving you nice, clear examples. Um, so <clears throat> this is where we ask the question, <clears throat> what IQ <clears throat> separates the top 10% from the rest. So <clears throat> we are looking for a critical value. Now, <clears throat> you may or may not encounter the word critical value or the term critical value right here, right now, but in the end of the day, that's what this turns out to be. So we are given a couple of things. We are given an area and an orientation. And I'll explain what I mean by that when I get to my picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. The tool. Inverse normal, that's gonna be the tool we're going to use here. <clears throat> Inverse because we're undoing the notion of finding a probability. You may remember the notion of F and F inverse, the notion of inverse functions that were, was developed in your basic algebra sequence. It is part of that process, but uh, we really do not spend a lot of time dwelling on that particular aspect. <clears throat> so here, we're looking for the top 10%. So <clears throat> the area I am interested in is 10%. <clears throat> That's 
this bit of area here, zero point, and I'll get to the decimal part in a moment. That's the part I'm interested in. I do not know what that score is. Now, the top 10%, you know how numbers work. They go from low to high, right? Top 10% is over here on the far right. <clears throat> over here, eh, not so much. <clears throat> the point is, we've got an orientation and we know where to look. We refer to this particular area of a distribution in a particular way. We call this piece of real estate the right tail because it's on the right. Yeah, the other one's going to be called something else. So <clears throat> there we go. So what I'm looking for is that value right there. And as I say, the tool I use is the inverse norm tool. We don't have any special notation here. In some sense, we're starting with the answer. I need to remember it's 0 0.10, but other than that, a calculator is quite helpful. So, <clears throat> inverse normal. <clears throat> Here, we're asked to put in the area, 0.1010%. Our mean was 100, our standard deviation 15. <clears throat> now, my TI-84 has this notion of left, center, right in terms of a tail. If I take a look at my picture, I shaded the right tail. <clears throat> this is what I paste into my function. And I get a score of 119.22 and change. And I'll just take one decimal place here. I always like a little bit of finer gradation than my summary statistics. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, x equals 119.2. <clears throat> now, I'm going to try something here, and I'll be honest, I'm really not sure what's going to happen. I've got a whole bunch of these calculators, and they always manage to surprise me. <clears throat> Let me clear you away. Let me take off my stat wizard. And let me see what the inverse norm looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to plug in 0 0.10. I'm going to plug in the comma 100, the comma, the 15. And then I'm going to close them up. I know on the other tool I, I had a choice. But if you don't have one of these versions of the calculator, you're not going to get a choice. I might get an error message here. I really don't know. Ah, no, I didn't. <clears throat> Look what I got. I got something 80. That's way, way down there, isn't it? Let me show you what my calculator actually did uh, when I don't use the uh, tool, the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the stat wizard tool. So let me stop my sharing. <clears throat> So first off, the score for the top 10% is 119.2 or higher. If that is your IQ, you are in the top 10%. <clears throat> now, you'll notice on that last one, I got a score of 80 something. What happened there? I'm going to squeeze it in down here because it's really not part of the problem per se, but it's something that I need to address depending on your 
score there. So I still found 10% of the area, but it was working in from the left. If you have one of these older calculators, your inverse norm tool doesn't give you that choice that I had to take a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail. You'll notice here that if we're working on a right tail of 10% here, excuse me, if that area there is equal to 10%, the, all the area over here has got to be equal to 90%. You need 100% at the end of the day. So watch this. And I feel I need to show you both uh, directions because um, I don't know who has what calculator. <clears throat> so let me uh, come back here to the inverse norm distribution. This time I'm gonna type in 90 comma 100 comma 15. <clears throat> Close them up. And now I'm back to that 119. <clears throat> so the older versions of the inverse norm work very, very much like the uh, binomial cumulative distribution function. You give area or get area cumulatively from the left. <clears throat> if you have the newer version like I do, and you choose to turn your stat wizard on, then that tool takes on a very different look. I get this choice right there. See if I had chosen the left tail, there we go. Now I'm gonna get back down to that 80 again. See, there's that 80. <clears throat> so, it's something to keep in mind as you work through these problems. <clears throat> Let me do another one. And then we'll summarize. All right. SAT scores. They are normal with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. So, <clears throat> what, uh, oh, that's not this. I misspelled it. Hold on, I got to start it. That was too messy. <clears throat> All right, take two. SAT scores. They follow a normal distribution. Mean is 500. Standard deviation is 100. And we're going to find the scores <clears throat> that separate the highest and lowest 10% of scores. <clears throat> All right, so highest and lowest 10% of scores. Now, <clears throat> we do have a couple of different approaches here, depending on your calculator and honestly, how you choose to approach the problem. I got to keep an eye on the 10%, the highest and the lowest, 10%. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and draw my distribution. Uh, if you've been 
uh, watching the videos, you know that the distribution that I draw is designed to help me figure out what's going on. So I don't necessarily draw a quote unquote nice and bell-shaped curve all the time. Sometimes I just draw something like this. It's enough for me to get my mind around a couple of critical values. I've got one over here. I've got one over here, one on the high, one on the low. And I don't know what they are, but I know that this area here is 10% of the total area or 0 0.10. And I know that area there is another 10% of the total, high and low. Oh, I'm sorry, this should say 500, not 100. There we go. <clears throat> so as I say, 10%, 0 0.10, a 0 0.10. So, those are the scores I need to find. How many scores do I need to find? Two. Now, as I say, there are a couple of ways of going about doing this, depending on your calculator and your approach. <clears throat> the first thing that one might do is to use symmetry. Normal distributions are symmetric about the mean. So the score that differentiates the lowest percent is symmetrically below the mean uh, exactly as far as the score that differentiates the top 10% is above the mean. This distance is, these two distances are the same. <clears throat> Don't know what they are yet, but I know they're the same because the graph is symmetric. So, I'll ask Mr. Calculator to come back. <clears throat> And I'm going to approach it first using symmetry and I'll take it from the left-hand side. So <clears throat> if you're using this with an older version, it'll work exactly the same. Oh, that's the wrong tool, sorry. There we go. Area 0 0.10, the mean 500, the standard deviation, 100. And if I take the left-hand tail and keep that, <clears throat> that's exactly what I would be plugging in uh, without the special uh, stat wizard. So Now I could certainly try to use symmetry and figure out exactly what that other score is. And I could by about adding that much to my 500. I'll show you that in a moment, but I'm gonna run through those keystrokes uh, again, <clears throat> this time for the one on the right-hand side. So same detail on the right-hand side, paste that little guy in, So how many scores did I find? I found two. And I will note that while you might encounter the occasional rounding error, if I take 500 and I add to that 371.2, excuse me, no, that's not right. Oh, it went away. <laughs> What I need to find is that distance, 500 
uh, minus 371.8. I think this is too much work, honestly. So that's 128. <clears throat> and if I take my 500 and I add that 128.2, there is a 628.2. So that's another way to get to it. But, it, uh, but that one's a little bit more difficult. I think people are better served, <clears throat> better served with uh, <clears throat> the actual tool itself. Um, <clears throat> for example, if I take the stat wizard off, Use my inverse norm and plug in 90 comma 500 comma 100. <clears throat> now I'll get the 628 and change. Oh dear, no, I won't. Oh, my bad, boy, what a... Gosh, it's embarrassing. There we go. There's a 628.2. <clears throat> um, so in any case, sometimes you will need two scores. You need a high and a low score. Those are going to be important critical values. Um, if you are using uh, the stat wizard, you do have to be a little bit careful. Let me turn them back on and <clears throat> let me stop sharing for just a second and come back here. And if you do have the stat wizard like I have, then you've got to take a couple of things into account. <clears throat> if you've got an area, for example, of 10% on the left tail, 10% on the right tail, <clears throat> that means you have some area in the middle. The amount of area in the middle, 80% or 0 0.80. And I get that because <clears throat> those areas have to sum to one or 100%. So <clears throat> if my stat wizard is turned on and I need two scores, I find that middle area, you can really see the, uh, yeah, I'll run through that, uh, that example again. In fact, maybe I'll pick a completely different problem. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and just uh, share that uh, one more time. <clears throat> if I do have my stat wizard turned on, <clears throat> the area is now 0 0.8, 80%, 0.80, 80%. <clears throat> the mean and the standard deviation are still the same, but this time I pick center and paste, and there we go. So there's the 371.8, and there's the 628.2. So <clears throat> the newer versions are capable of giving you both. However, let's run through another one uh, where that is not the case. I'm gonna make one up here. <clears throat> Exam scores. <clears throat> maybe we're talking about our final, maybe not. They are normal. Uh, they have a mean of 123 and a standard deviation of six. <clears throat> we wanna find scores for the top and bottom. Yeah, let's make it 5% this time. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna do this one without the fancy wizard. Goodbye, Mr. Wizard. <clears throat> now, again, my picture comes into play. And you gotta remember, <clears throat> total area is equal to one 
for 100%. All right, so I have one over here and I've got one over here. I've got area over here. I've got area over here, top and bottom, 5%. All right, so <clears throat> the first value we're going to go for is the left. And I'll remind you <clears throat> that when you go for one of these values, this time it's the left, all the area gets measured in from the left. So for my left <clears throat> calculation, the area I am concerned with is <clears throat> that area there, all the way in, stopping right there, 0 0.05 is the sum total of that area. So <clears throat> let me come back to Mr. Calculator and we'll get the left point. All right, <clears throat> he's off. Here's my distribution. There's inverse norm. Good. So 0 0.05, comma. The mean was 123, comma. The standard deviation was six. Close, excuse me, close up the parentheses. <clears throat> Blow on it once for luck. And I'll take one decimal place. Or you know what? I'm going to take whole numbers here. 113. It's more about the keystrokes. <clears throat> Don't worry. You'll always know what to round to. It's not a secret. So <clears throat> 113. The X point on the left is 113. All right. So let me stop my sharing. So I'm done with the left. I'm going to go on to the right. Remember, we measure from the left. I measured from the left. My X value was 113. <clears throat> Coming in from the left when I had 5% of the area. Now, <clears throat> this is where a little bit of basic arithmetic comes in. If I've got, how much of my area over here? 5%. <clears throat> so how much of my area comes in now from the left? Over here, 95% or 0 0.95. Remember, we measure that area from the left. So So 95% <clears throat> of the area coming in from the left, mean and standard deviation, 132.8 or 133. So every time we calculate it, our first one will always be on the left. Uh, no, you could start on the right, use 95% and then use 5%. I just think it's easier to work from left to right because I read from left to right, I suppose. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we have that X value, 133. That was the value on the right. <clears throat> so that's the... This is the way I have to place the area into that particular tool. I could have done this one first and gone with 95%, but 
gotten this value and then come back and done that one and use the 5%. <clears throat> but like I say, I tend to read from left to right. So that's the way I did that. <clears throat> So hopefully that helps. <clears throat> I'm just about out of time, so I'm going to stop my sharing. Uh, you've now seen examples of uh, <clears throat> a lot of normal uh, distributions. So go ahead, take a look at the video, practice these keystrokes, they are vital. <clears throat> I'll be posting this uh, within the next day or so, so look for it there. <clears throat>